so what I'm doing is I'm just kind of clearing my electromagnetic field or my aura of any debris that I may have picked up from my thoughts or others or just anything in general that makes you feel a little heavier and denser in energy. So this is a piece of natural selenite. I always start with this before any kind of work um, to clear my space and myself and uh, it's considered like your sage in the crystal world. This is crystal sage. So getting a piece of selenite is very helpful. So today I'm gonna to talk about grounding stones. Um, before I do that, let's talk about what grounding is, uh, why we need it. How would we know that we need some grounding, some extra grounding? If you're feeling like you can't focus, you're not getting things done, your projects and your to-do lists are just becoming too chaotic, um, life is just either causing you to not want to get out of bed, uh, you're very tired, your legs could be very heavy, um, you're just a general feeling of not feeling well. Um, you know, dizziness, clumsiness, running into walls, just not paying attention, your head's in the clouds, you're, you're always in your imagination, um, you're always wanting to go into that escapism. Um, so that's a good indication that you need some grounding work. Um, you know, one way we can ground, aside from the stones, is we can start our day with the meditation, and in that meditation, be very clear with our intentions for the day. That alone will usually put you into a nice, grounded, centered, aligned space within yourself, and it'll help you, you know, get through your daily uh, agenda. Uh, other things you can do, um, <clears throat> if you can, get outside and get your feet in the dirt or the grass, sit in the grass, lay in the grass, walk in the grass. Now, you know, our ancestors and ancients, the ancients and indigenous people, they, they slept on the ground, they walked on the ground. They didn't have anything between their feet like we do today. Today we have so much um, protection in between the earth that we're not receiving her electrons, we're not being energized, so our immune systems are off, we're having sleep disruption, anxiety, depression, and all of these things can be allevi alleviated. Oh, there's a little birdie. Hi, birdie. Hi, Robin. All of these, okay, I need some grounding, so I can't even pay attention to what I'm doing. Okay, uh, where was I? Oh, anyway, okay, I've lost my whole train of thought, but there we go. I need some grounding, so good day for me to be out here. Um, let's see. 2,000 years late. Okay, so I think I've got my focus now. Back to grounding. Um, I just also wanted to speak a little bit about it's very good to teach our kids about grounding as well. Um, teach them about meditation, um, doing grounding meditations. They are coming in with a lot of um, a lot more knowing than us. Um, they're more advanced, they're faster, they're quicker, they're learning, they're coming in completely ready to go. And it can be frustrating as parents trying to catch up with that. And so some of the things that we can do is um, assist them in bringing it down a notch. You know how your kids get wild and you say go outside and play? There's a reason for that. It's to get outside into nature and let that energy ground. Um, one way we can also do that is by asking, you know, if you have a really young one, he's totally spazzing out, freaking out, tell him to turn counterclockwise. And I guarantee it just slows him down and um, gives him something to focus on. And that's part of the problem is these kids are coming in um, not wanting to focus. They're bored. Um, this stuff that we're teaching, it's just all a bunch of old junk. And it's not, it's not, a lot of it's not even accurate. So. I don't blame them for feeling frustrated. So the ADHD, I think that's all nonsense. I just think we need to um, teach our kids to be calm, be respectful, be loving, but try to remember that they're coming in with a lot more than we are. Anyway, that aside, I kind of went off on a little tangent there. Um, grounding, so a couple of other things we can do um, is, you know, yeah, you get into an argument, you get into a fight, 
you, the first thing you want to do is go outside, go for a walk, because you cannot stay angry in nature. Um, sit in the grass, the earth, she, she'll take that on. She'll take it on for you, and you'll feel really great afterwards. Um, you know, if you are not able to do this, you're in an office setting, um, you just you can't get out, it's snowing out, whatever, make yourself a little mojo bag and put some of those grounding stones in the bag and just put them on your feet during break time or have them there the whole time, whatever. Um, so there's ways around it. You know, we can also eat foods that are grounding, root foods especially, turmeric, um, uh, ginger, that sort of thing. Um, so what else can we do? I, I want to share, um, I do know that earthing is real, earthing is good for you. Um, one day, I'm a coffee girl and I need my coffee to wake up and one morning I just decided to come out and do yoga in the grass and bring a mat just, you know, in the grass. When I was done, I felt like I had three shots of espresso. I kid you not, I felt so excellent, so awesome. Um, and I knew right there. It definitely helps um, give you energy. It helps your immune system. It's good for if you're depressed or you've got a lot of anxiety or frustration. Get in the grass, sit on a rock, get in a river. If you're near an ocean, go to the ocean, get your feet in the sand, whatever you can do. Um, in those times, though, that we can't get out into nature um, and we don't want to meditate, which although meditation is really good for setting your intention for the day and having that sort of clarity. If you don't have time for that and you're in a hurry, then we can use the crystals and stones. So first, I want to explain a little bit about what a friend of mine taught me. She's an Ayurvedic practitioner. She taught me about the three different doshas. Um, there is the vata, the kalpa, I believe it is, and the pitta. Um, I'm a vata. It, it's when someone is, there's not a lot of meat on their bones. <laughs> They get cold easily, they're, air, they're more airy, um, and uh, they need more grounding. So for, for those types of people, I suggest um, we use the hematite, which is what we find in the center of the earth, either one very large crystal or many crystals. Hematite. It's an iron-containing stone. So if you think about it for a minute, iron-containing stones speak to our blood. So they are going to energize ground, help circulate oxygen to our system, help our immune system. They're great. So whenever you're feeling tired, sick, lethargic, bumping into things, can't focus, heads in the clouds, totally out there, ground. So hematite, and I think they call this, and I hope I don't mess this up, bitrodial form, Hematite is very heavy, but I want to say this, for the um, kalphas and the pittas, or excuse me, kalpha, I don't remember, kapha. For the kapha and the pittas, they don't typically need this much grounding. This is more for the vatas. The kapha and the pittas are more um, muscular. They've got more meat on them. They're, they're they're in better condition, their bodies are conditioned. They don't require the grounding, they have more density to them. So, with that said, oh, and one other thing, if you are a fire sign, astrologically, typically they will not like this either because it comes from a very, very hot spot. So, um, well, I'll talk about what we can use for, for that. But for right now, this is hematite here, um, this, is hematite. How's it looking there? Good? Mm -hmm. um, it also comes in this crystalline form. And typically we see it in a tumbled form. And the tumbled form is really cool because um, we can put that in our pockets and we'll be very grounded that day just by having them in our pockets. All right, so for um, the uh, pittas and the kaphas and the air signs, I would say you would want to more go with um, petrified wood. Why? It's an organic, it's rooted into the ground, it's in connection with the earth, 
but it grows up into the environment and it grows branches. So at least you can keep our air signs in the branches or those that don't want to feel that heat in the tree. So this is very grounding for those who need that kind of grounding. Here's another piece of petrified wood. This is more tumbled. And there's this. And three weeks later, many months later. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. And then we have this natural piece, which is huge and gorgeous. Um, see that sparkle? I think it's some kind of calcite druse that just grew right onto the petrified wood. I just oh, love this. It's gorgeous. It's heavy. It's very grounding. Very grounding. All right. Oh, I wanted to show you these. Specularite. Kind of tight. Um, now, specularite or specular hematite also works well for some reason with the fire signs. They tend to handle this much easier than hematite. I believe the reason for that is, see the, um, that play on color in there, those specks? That is mica. Mica is very protective. It can be heated at high, high temperatures. Um, so I'm thinking that, that mica in there is creating a little bit different of a frequency, making it a lot more um, usable for those fire signs. So in fact, if you turn it, and I've got my sticker on there, if you turn it to the back, you can see that mic you can see the hematite in there. But to me, it looks like the night sky. I mean, it's just gorgeous. And so um, if you are in traffic, I find when I'm in traffic, and if I've had, if it's been kind of heavy and I feel frazzled, I just put one in each palm and I'm immediately grounded. You can feel it. It just melts, melts you right into the ground. I love it. It's my new favorite. I would highly recommend it. Put it in your pillow to sleep. Put it in your um, pocket. Not this large of a piece, but... Okay, and this is basically what mica looks like. Um, this is just a little piece that I took out from some that I got from Idaho. Um, it's just little layers. And you know they just peel off like little sheets of glass. So that is what's inside this specularite. This is a septarian egg. Um, they use this typically for bringing together groups. To me, that makes sense because it it grounds everybody together. Um, when I used this, I clearly got the message that it wanted to work with my balance. Um, for a while there, I had some vertigo going on and it really helped. It was actually speaking to my ankles. Uh, it could have even been trying to tell me to move forward without fear because it was so prominent in my ankles. Um, the calcite inside, you'll see that sparkle. That's the brown stuff. What happens with the septarian? I wanna say these come out of Utah, but I can't remember. Anyway, they're typically found in this lake, and what'll happen is little crustaceans and bugs and um, you know minerals will roll around for lo for for long periods, hundreds of years, uh, rolling around and create these big mud balls. And when they crack them open, we get these beautiful septarian eggs. Some of them have different calcite crystals inside that are like in a creamy beige color. They're just beautiful, um, really cool, and it's heavy. And it's very grounding. Uh, let's see here. We can also use, for those that don't like the hot heat, we can use these um, smoky quartz. This is a double terminated smoky quartz. And this is a beautiful smoky elestial a friend of mine gave me. And um, they're very detoxifying, especially if you're sick, you're not feeling well, take a bath with some tumbled, cleaned, smoky quartz, totally safe. You can make elixirs out of it. Um, but those are very grounding. And we can also use pyrite. Well, here is a pyrite cluster. There's a big piece of pyrite. 
Um, this can also be used on your solar plex. Here's one where the um, cubes, I think there's three on here. There's a little teeny one. It probably won't show up, but I'll show you these two. They grow in absolute perfect cubes. This is natural. This was not polished this way. This is how they grow. So we can use those. We can use this boronite. It's got a lot of peacock color in it. Very heavy, very grounding. Um, probably won't be able to see this very well. This is a piece of natural bloodstone. It's got green and red in it, uh, red jasper. Red jasper is very grounding too and good for the root chakra. Um, because of the green ray and the red, not only does it ground you, but if you're having you know, heartache, it helps assist that as you're grounding the energy. Uh, let's see here. What else have I got? These aren't very pretty, but they're very grounding. This is gothite, iron containing stone. We've got black tourmaline. This one's cool. This is my big old chunk of black tourmaline, also known as shoral. Very grounding, iron containing. Here's some rough. And here's my black tourmaline cluster. I like to put this in front of the TV with my pyrite. Uh, this is lodestone. Lodestone is also known as magnetite. Magnetite does not have electrical charge, but when it does have an electrical charge, they call it lodestone. And it needs to be, um, well, actually what will happen is it will attract iron filings, but it's typically going to get that um, from being struck by lightning or a natural force. Very grounding. You can tie this onto a string and swing it around your um, aura and it will immediately ground you. And we've got Moki balls. This is the male and this is the female. I typically hold the male in the right hand and the female in the left hand. It will ground and merge the masculine feminine energy. Uh, really cool. Um, you can do a layout with the masculine at the top and the feminine at the feet and it will work all the way through the chakras. These are also Moki balls but I wanted to show you the size. They also have something called boji stones, and they look this size. Now these are moki balls, little ones, but the boji stones are going to be like this. This would be like considered a huge boji stone. The boji stones have pyrite in them. The moki balls have hematite coating, both very grounding, easy to put in your pocket, easy to put in your pillow for sleeping. Okay, and then, of course, we've got the obsidian, which is amorphous. It's glass meaning that when the um, atoms, when it cooled off, the atoms did not have time to molecularly arrange in a perfect symmetrical pattern. So they're just kind of random and all over the place. That's how we know when we're dealing with glass and not a crystal. So this one is a big piece of rainbow. Isn't that gorgeous? Ah, heavy. I love it, love it, love it, love it. You could take this one outside and sit on it. Okay, and then this one is obsidian too. This is a mahogany obsidian. It's got that brown, reddish brown coloration in it. Totally gorgeous, totally grounding. Uh, black obsidian, I don't have a piece of that here with me. Um, black obsidian used sparingly. The rest of them, the snowflake obsidian, which I also don't have here, um, is black with little white specks in it. Um, the green obsidian, I'm not talking about the Gaia glass, the man-made stuff, I'm talking about the obsidian with green sheen. There's purple obsidian, um, there's, um, I have some silver sheen obsidian. There's golden sheen, I have some of that too, not with me. There is the Apache Tears which this is a pretty big piece. Um, that's also obsidian. And uh, what other kind of obsidian is there? There's a ton. I know I'm just not thinking, but there's a couple more. I know there's a couple more. It'll come to me later. This is a shungite. It comes out of Russia. 
very purifying. Uh, you can put this in your water. It will literally purify your water, and that's you can read about that online. Shungite, S-H-U-N-G-I-T-E. Um, very protective, very grounding, and can cleanse your water. So let's see, is there anything that I didn't cover here? I know, also want to mention, I don't have any, I have some, but not here. Um, you probably are familiar with, with tiger eye. There's something called tiger iron, and it has um, red jasper, yellow jasper, and I believe it's magnetite in it. Uh, anyway, it's very grounding as well, very energizing, very grounding. So, did I miss anything? No, I think that's about it. Did I show this? I think I did. Did I show you that petrified wood? I did, didn't I? Okay, so I guess that's it. Um, this is definitely not the only grounding stones you can work with. If you pick up a stone and you feel like you're very calm and grounded with that, you feel energized and you have clarity in your mind, you might even feel inspired, then use that. Use that stone by all means. These are just suggestions because they're easy to find, they're affordable, um, easy to work with. And uh, most people will know what you're talking about if you go and um, seek it out. So uh, there's that. And get into the earth, get into the dirt, be in nature, pot some plants, go swimming, go to a, what do you call those? Um, think of what they're called the spas where you get all this toxins coming out sweat sweat lodge go to a sweat lodge do your uh, you know your um, cleanses um, and just be well and I hope this video helped you out at the end of this video I will do a close-up of all the different stones so you can get a better look at them in case they didn't come off very well in this uh, video so we'll go ahead and um, do that and I hope you're being your day is beautiful and you have a great day and thank you so much and again I'm Janine with White Onyx Therapy and enjoy the rest of your day namaste okay so just to quickly recap this is the rainbow hematite you see that catch a play of light this is the uh, silver sheen obsidian Mahogany Obsidian, Apache Tear Obsidian, Smoky Quartz, Smoky Elestial, Bloodstone, Bornite, Septarian. Again, these are little Moki balls, but I wanted to just to compare. This is what the Boji stones would look like in size. These are Moki marbles. Hematite, 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 specularite or specular hematite. This is the mica, this is the mica flakes inside. Lodestone, black tourmaline, black tourmaline rough, black tourmaline cluster, petrified wood, big rough piece of petrified wood with uh, calcite druze. Petrified wood, petrified wood. Gothite, pyrite, pyrite cube, pyrite cluster, and I think that about covers it. So any of those stones will help you ground, meditate with them, put them under your bed, put them in your pillow, Carry them in your pocket, in your purse, make a little mojo bag for work. Um, however you would choose to use them, you can wear them too. Um, well, thank you again, and until next time, namaste.